You found a podcast where you'll hear the truth, and we will praise Jesus' name. We stand for the Bible and won't back down from it, although it don't bring much fame. Some folks will like it, some will try to deny it, but God's Word will always stand true. It's been tried in the fire, still Hello, friends and faithful listeners. It's time for the Pod King Bible Study. And I'm your co-host, Donald King. And I'm joined by the host of this study, Brother Donnie King. On this podcast, we study the Bible from its original languages so we can understand the Word of God more clearly. We look at current events and news in light of Scripture, and we also examine some of the things going on within our culture from a biblical perspective. This is Friday, October the 4th, our three-year anniversary. Last time we dug in pretty deep because we only covered two verses, (laughs) but oh my. We began to see some amazing things within God's Word. God has delivered us from the power of darkness, and He's also translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. We have redemption through the shedding of the precious blood of Christ, and through His blood we receive forgiveness for sin. We looked at several cross references, sought out a few word meanings, and much more. If you need encouragement, listen today if you hadn't already. Today, we change things up a bit, and the occasion called for it. This episode is a celebration of our three-year anniversary in doing this podcast. When I say we change things up, I mean it. We sat down for an interview today with Shana Wilson, and she will be asking us several questions. We do a lot of looking back, reflecting, and thanking God for our audience, which has helped us make it these three years. This isn't a humdrum episode. We talk about some pretty surprising things and we get very transparent we believe you will enjoy the change of pace as much as we did so come on and listen to it right now and now for the teaching of god's word and the lesson for today turn it to the host of our podcast brother donnie king well welcome to the pod king bible study we have a really special show for you today what are you talking about this is some big stuff right here we're in celebration mode in this studio That's exactly right. We aren't going to waste a lot of time with small talk today because we are flipping the script on this one. And so instead of us digging into various topics, we're going to get grilled today. Well, that'd be better than being boiled or deep fried, I figure. (laughs) Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah, I do. And I want to introduce my daughter, Shanna Wilson, to the audience. You might remember her. She's been on the show several times before. And she'll be interviewing us today. And she says she has several questions lined up for us. Yeah, welcome to the show, Shannon. Thank you. Glad to be back again. We might as well let her get started on doing her job, so take it away. Yeah, roll them. Okay, well, my first question that I have for y'all today is, when y'all started this podcast, did y'all think you would be doing this for three years? Well, when we started, I didn't have a clue what I was doing or what I was getting into, so I didn't know if we'd make it six months back then. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I didn't know how well the true word and godly teaching would be accepted by a mixed audience, but I think they do appreciate it. Yeah, well, you can listen to some of our earliest episodes, and you can tell we didn't quite have it all together. Guess what? Neither do we have it all together now. (laughs) This is true. (laughs) But three years in, what do you do from here? Well, I reckon we just keep plodding on. Try it. I'd say just keep doing what we're doing, expounding God's Word. Do you have any plans for how much longer you'll keep this up and going? You know, that's something that I have thought about many times, and I honestly have no clue. On a negative note, I'll say it this way. Probably until people are either no longer listening, or on the positive note, as long as people are getting help, we're going to try to keep it going. As long as people are receiving it well and it's helping someone, I can't hardly see shutting it down. Yeah, I agree. I'd I'd say as long as God permits. I really think when we started this, there was just a desire to do something for God. And now it's been going on for three years and it's almost like it's been surreal in some ways that we didn't realize that it would go on this long. Yeah. But we have no plans right now to shut it down. That's right. When you started this podcast, you were living in Seabury, Kentucky, pastoring a church in Owensboro. Then you felt a need to resign. You preached several revivals and helped a couple of local churches there in that area. But then you ended up moving to McAllister, Oklahoma, and pastoring Blue Holiness Church for almost 18 months now. While all that was transpiring, was it hard to keep the podcast going? Well, I can certainly say it was challenging, mainly because at that time I was doing a daily devotional email five days a week, 
plus teaching a Bible study five days a week on Marco Polo. And then I was also doing this podcast of which we were doing two episodes a week. And then on top of all that, you had all of the preaching and teaching engagements that I had. So yeah, it was quite a challenge. Since we've moved here, I've dropped the daily devotional email and I've downsized the Marco Polo Bible study to just three days a week. And then I've also scaled back on the podcast to only doing two special editions a month instead of one every week. Why did you wait until you moved to Oklahoma to make those adjustments? Well, Blue is a wonderful church, and I love being here in this area, love the people, and the people here at the church want to be very involved, which makes me much busier than I used to be. In all honesty, it was mainly because I wanted the church to know that they're my top priority above everything else. What do you know today that you didn't know three years ago? In other words, what have you learned in these three years? Well, I know that there's more to podcasting than just sitting down behind a microphone and just simply talking. (laughs) There's hours of prep that goes into the study for each one of the episodes. Then you got all of the editing process and several other components that didn't seem like they would be much, but in reality, they are time killers. You know, what I guess intrigues me that there are people still interested in hearing God's word. And I believe some people long for something deep down in their inner person. And that's why they tune into our podcast to hear the Word of God. I believe that. How long does it take to get a thought for an episode and record it and get it published? Well, it varies, but anywhere between six to eight hours goes into each episode. In all reality, the thoughts for the episodes come pretty easily, but the material and the information that we bring forth doesn't come as easy. After all of the editing is done... You have to then download it to our publishing company, Buzzsprout, and then it depends on how good the Wi-Fi signal is. So it varies from time to time. But the thoughts aren't a problem because normally I've always got something I feel like talking about or something I feel led to teach about. And then most of the episodes are based off of the questions that come in from other people. And the Monday book study, of course, which we know what we're going to be teaching. Yeah, well, the only part I get involved in that is just actually sitting here recording it, but then he works long after I'm through. Has there been a specific episode or episodes that stand out to you as special? Oh, yeah, there's been several. To me, the modern-day bell worship ones were really powerful to do. And then the systematic theology episodes that explain what we believe and why we believe has really been important to me. Yeah, I enjoyed the... uh, Trinity teaching and the book of John. That was a couple of my favorites there that just come to mind. Oh, really? After you complained every week for 15 months about how long this study went on? Well, I mean, how could I forget it when we stay on it for two years? (laughs) Did any episodes go over better than you expected them to? Yeah. In reality, there's been quite a few that resonated with people that I had felt led to cover, but didn't really think they would do as well. As a matter of fact, the idea that anybody even listens to them is amazing to me. So for them to go over really well, really surprises us. The main one that has shocked me the most, I would say, is the one we've done on modesty with Brother Darren Wood. That holds sixth place all time out of every study that we've done. The whole book of Revelation blew me out of the water concerning how many people were interested in it. I nearly didn't even do that book study even though it had been requested by several people. We did a couple of episodes titled Truth or Tradition, and they went over really well. That was followed by peer pressure in the church, which even exceeded them. I think all of the Q&As, in my opinion, have been a very huge hit. I guess the weirdest one that we've done, in my opinion, was the Mysteries of the Euphrates River in its fifth place all time. We did two episodes on the Mark of the Beast in our Revelation series, and both of them are in the top ten. Another oddball episode that we did that really connected with people was the hanging of Haman's 10 sons. And you were in on that one with us. I really enjoyed the book of Revelation. I liked that end time teaching. And I think those episodes went really well. And I think people enjoyed those because we did get a lot of response, a lot of questions during them episodes. That's true. Are there any episodes that you feel underperformed? Absolutely, most of them. (laughs) (laughs) Come on now. (laughs) No, in all seriousness, there's a few that I thought would ring everybody's bell, but they ended up getting a lot less listens than some of the ones I thought were more so just kind of filling space. It, It just It's really surprising what grabs people's attention. 
Well, you know, you don't really know people what their schedules are. Sometimes they got more time to listen and in vacation times and stuff like that comes in. But yeah, I agree with you. There were some of them that I really thought was going to do well that underperformed. Which ones in particular? Well, to be honest with you, one of the ones that I thought would go over really well was Table Fellowship. Then one that we done in the Hebrew study that I titled Frapping the Boat. I thought that one would just blow it out of the water because who knows what that even means. I thought that would grab somebody's attention. And obviously, since they didn't know what frapping the boat is, they didn't listen to it very much. <laughs> but And I'd say that basically every Christmas episode we've ever done has very much underperformed. We put a lot of time and effort into them, and it just seems like, boom, they're just, you know, nobody really listened to much of them. The Fulfillment of the Old Testament King. That was one that I just thought would go over really well. Seeing the book of Exodus and Matthew's gospel. To me, that's the kind of stuff that floats my boat. Jesus and the fulfillment of the four messianic miracles. To to me, these things right here, I just love digging into that. And so I couldn't wait to teach those. And then it just kind of done mediocre. One of the ones that we've released recently was Have You Seen Him? To me, I thought that one right there. That would be one that just, boom, it just shoots to the top pretty quickly. And so far, it's just been kind of average, maybe even a little below average. What are people missing in these shows? Well, it's different things in each one, of course. In Table Fellowship, we go over how just sitting down to a meal brings together people. It heals some hurts. It strengthens families at times. Even these things is sitting down at a table having a meal together has stopped wars and has mended friendships. And I'm talking about literal wars between countries. The one I was talking about frapping the boat, it's out of that Hebrews book study. And there's a Greek word in Hebrews 4 and 16 that has a ton of meaning in it. And it's probably one of the most encouraging episodes that we've ever done. I wish everybody would give a listen to that one. We put a ton of time, as I said, into the Christmas episodes, but I reckon people's too busy around Christmas to be able to listen to them. And then after Christmas is over, nobody wants to listen to a Christmas episode. (laughs) So the fulfillment of the Old Testament King, I believe that's one of the most powerful episodes that we've done. And it explains why there were kings in the Old Testament and how all of them, whether wicked or good, the kingship points to Jesus Christ. See, in the book of Exodus and Matthew's gospel that I mentioned, it's all about types and shadows. What you see in the book of Exodus, we begin to see fulfilled in Matthew's gospel. It helps us understand why certain things happened in the Old Testament. It was all there to point us to Jesus. Then the last one I mentioned, have you seen him? That episode takes all of the Old Testament appearances of Christ and begins to bring them out in the open, showing us proof that Jesus is all over and all in the Old Testament. And I reckon the phrase, have you seen him? People just haven't resonated with the idea of what does that mean? And so they haven't checked it out. Yeah, I fully agree with you. What episodes do you feel were the most needed? Well, let me just say mine and then you can take it from there. I still go back to the Trinity. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I enjoyed the book of Revelation. And as hard a time as I gave you, I really love the book of John. Yeah, to me, this is a tough one, mainly because I decide what to do by how either the Lord leads me or the questions we receive and sometimes by the current events that pertain to us. So looking at it that way, I feel that they all have a certain level of importance or we wouldn't waste our time even doing an episode if we know that it's not worth listening to. Yeah. The ones I felt the most anointed to teach, though, I'll have to say it was in that series called What Should Biblical Leadership Look Like? And there's three of those. We've done a one, two, and three. I was contacted by more people about those than any other series that we've ever done. Next, I'd have to say Deliverance Through Christ with Brother Stevie Coombs. It's about the things that the youth of our day is struggling with. And I've had people contact me about their loved ones who are at the point of suicide seeking help for them. I've had couples that are on the brink of divorce reach out to me, seeing if I would give them counseling, of which we did. And many other things came from that episode. So I feel like that that had to be one that was very much needed, even though some people would say, well, we're not struggling with that in the holiness church. We don't have any problems with those kind of things. Obviously, we do. And obviously, there are people that are battling things that we don't know a thing about. Episodes like that thrills my heart when I see that we did touch on something that was very much needed. 
Well, what my next question was going to be is, do you get much feedback from your listeners? We do, but not as much as I originally expected we would. I agree with you. We do, but maybe not as much as we'd like. We'd like to hear what people really think and feel toward our episodes that we put out. Do you get feedback from certain ones on a regular basis? We do have some regulars that you can pretty much count on some of them to come on with a question. Yeah, we have about 15 people we hear from. Basically, every five to 10 episodes, we'll hear from those same 10, 15 people. And it's a wide array of things that they write in asking about. Some of them have told me that they feel like they know me personally just because we email back and forth and I answer their questions on the study. I've had a lot of people tell me that they feel like they know me better than I know them because they hear my voice every week. An interesting thing that happened to me, I was at a meeting somewhere in the United States. I'd never been to this church before, and after the service, they were having a dinner, and so I got in line. One of the women serving the food looked at me, and she says, do you want any green beans? And I said, yeah, I'll take some green beans, but I don't want a roll. And she looked at me, and she said, are you Donnie King? And she had never met me before, and I'd never met her, and I said, yeah, I am. Why? She said, I could tell by your voice who you was. So just by telling her what food I wanted, she recognized my voice from the podcast. Stuff like that's really exciting to me. And so just getting any kind of feedback, whether in person or through email, through phone calls, text messages, however people have reached out to me, I appreciate that. I really do. Is most of your feedback more positive or negative? I'd say it's mixed, but I'll say it's mostly positive. The people that are contacting us and making comments to us, I think it's people that really want to know what the Bible says and where they can find it at. Yeah, we definitely get much more positive feedback, and I would say that most likely close to 90% of the time. And mainly, the negative feedback is more often stuff like, I can't believe you forgot to include Ephesians 4 in your episode about blah, blah, blah. And then it goes right along with what you're talking about and stuff like that. So to me, I'm taking that as a negative approach in one sense, but yet they're also trying to help us. Like, while you was going right down that bean row, I thought for sure you was going to throw in Ephesians 4. Most of the time, we get very positive feedback. Amen. It seems like you've gotten quite a few questions over the past three years. Do you like that? Is that something you'd like to see continue? Oh, me. Let me go first here. One of our favorite parts of the whole thing is getting the questions from our listeners, and I really enjoy that personally. Absolutely. I want to keep getting more, and I do like that. I wouldn't care if every episode ended up having to become a Q&A because we got so many questions coming <laughs> That's in. That's right. I certainly want it to continue. To me, it thrills me every time we look into the emails and we see another question has come in, and some of them have been very, very challenging. Some of them has been about controversial things. Thankfully, I don't mind to dive into something that's controversial because I believe that everybody has a right to understand everything that the Bible says. Now, having said that, do I understand everything the Bible says? Absolutely not. But I like seeking it out, trying to come to some kind of conclusion. And I try to tell people it could be this or it could be that when I don't know the answer. It looks like it's probably this, but I can see how they get that. And so I want to be as unbiased on the topic as possible. Even though I have my own beliefs on what I do feel like is being said most of the time, I want to seek it out again when the questions come in and give the best biblical answer that I can. There's been a few times that the questions came in when I got to seeking it out. I had to change my belief because I found out, hey, I'd always thought it was this way, but here's scriptural proof. This is the way it is. And so it's really been a blessing to me and a help to me trying to answer the questions. Let's take this thing and let's flip the script again for just a minute. And I want to ask Shana Wilson, my sister, a couple of questions right here. Oh, I love it. What are some of your favorite episodes? Well, you've kind of already touched on most of them that I was going to say. But I will say the Q&As I find very interesting because there are questions that you cover at times that I've never thought about before. And it just kind of makes you think. I enjoyed the one called The Hanging of Haman's Ten Sons. Like you said, I got to be a part of that one, but I learned a lot when we was recording it, and it was very interesting and intriguing. The one you mentioned, Deliverance Through Christ with Brother Stevie Coombs, is a very needful episode. It's very relevant to the times we're living in. The ones on the deity of Christ, the coverage of the entire books, such as John, James, they're all very interesting. And I also like the one about the River Euphrates. 
Now, let me ask you something else right here, because you mentioned some of the ones you liked. Obviously, there's going to be episodes people like. There's going to be some people like less, and there's going to be some people just don't find any interest in, and they start and just doesn't catch their interest, and they put it aside. They, they quit listening. I understand that. I don't like to think that people do that to my podcast, <laughs> but I do the same thing. If I start listening to something and it doesn't grab my interest, I bail out of it. And so I understand people will do that with this too. If I pick up a book and it doesn't grab my interest, I set the book down. I don't just go ahead and make myself read 400 pages of something I'm not interested in. So having stated that, does any of the titles that we have, or does a title turn you away, even if it has a biblical reference beside it that might intrigue you? Well, you mentioned like the frapping of the boat one. When I saw the episode come out, I had no idea what frapping of a boat meant. So I was intrigued by that, you know, because I didn't know what it meant. So that made me want to listen to that one. But I haven't really saw a title that's turned me away. Like if I don't know what it means, then it kind of makes me want to hear it. I thought yours were pretty interesting. Well, one of the ones that we released that really we released it early on is in the first three or four episodes. And it was the Apagasma. I thought for sure people would jump on that, wanting to what in the world is the apagasma. I even put the pronunciation of it on there so nobody would misunderstand how to pronounce it. And it just didn't ring anybody's bell much. They don't know what an apagasma is, and not many people listen to it. To me, it's one of the greatest episodes that we did in the book study of Hebrews also. What apagasma, I'm not even going to tell you what apagasma means. Go listen to the episode there if you, you want to know what go. it is. There you go. <laughs> but there's times that I see people put a title on things and I think, eh, yeah, I know about that. Or either, I don't know if I'm interested in that or not. Really, headlines and titles are to be catchy. And I don't feel like mine are catchy enough at times. And I, I just put something on there that tells a little bit about what the episode's going to be about. Or it's directly what the episode's going to be about. Sometimes when you're covering 10 verses, it's kind of hard to nail it down to just one thought because you're trying to touch on all of those thoughts. So my title sometimes may not make as much sense, but I'm taking little phrases from each verse in our book studies, and I'm putting them together trying to make a title that will cover what we're covering. I wondered if sometimes we don't get as many listens on a certain episode because the title might turn people away. If it's an episode that's got a title that I think, what in the world does that mean? I'm going to listen just to find out. I'm a curious type person. And so to me, it doesn't make sense that some of the titles might turn people away other than the fact that they may be looking for something that they need, something specific. And they're like, wow, that doesn't sound very encouraging. And it might be the most encouraging episode we got out, but the title might not give it away. This is one of the things that I think may figure into us getting less listens on certain of our episodes. So here's a question I want to ask you, and I want to ask both of you on this one. What else would you like to see us deal with here on the Pod King Bible Study? Any topics in particular, any subjects, any books? Well, I'd like to see maybe more guest speakers at times, maybe people giving their testimonies, telling where God's brought them from, hard things they face that God brought them through. People in the world these days need the hope of God and know that He can really change people's lives. I would like to personally do an episode on Israel or just real life things that are going on in this world people can relate to. And a lot of times if they are listening to your episode, if they hear a title, if it's a catchy title, a lot of times it catches people. You know, speaking of catchy titles, I heard about a guy one time who wrote a song entitled, If a bricklayer can lay bricks, why can't a plumber lay plums? What does that mean? Well, you'd have to ask him to get more information on it, but that was little Roy Lewis from the Lewis family who said that. <laughs> we sure need some comments on that one. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see some more titles more like that, just contact us and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> that may be why I don't write songs, too. I, either way, I know that there's issues that some people would love to hear about that they just don't, for some reason, write in or email us and let us know. And they're probably thinking, man, I wish I'd do so-and-so. We would love to hear from you. If you've got something that you would love to hear somebody discuss, talk about, dig into, we would love for you to write in to us and let us know that at DK Ministries 1977 at yahoo.com. There's so much out there that we can be dealing with. We don't want to deal with things people's minds aren't interested in. Honestly, we could do 15 episodes about this over here that we feel is needful, 
But if our audience can't connect with it and it doesn't help them or benefit them, we don't want to waste the time to do those episodes on this. We want to hit where the people's minds are. We want to go where you're being affected at. That's why the Q&As, they thrill me because I know we're answering questions that real people are having issues with trying to figure out, how do I believe this? How do I understand that? How are we to look at this? Does this mean this or does this mean that? Is this the right way to look at it? Have you ever had a question come in that you actually had to take a whole episode just to answer that one question? Yes. As a matter of fact, I've done several of those. Used to, every one of our Friday book studies was based off of a question, and we just took and done the whole episode on that one question. We have had numerous ones about the Holy Ghost over the last two to three months. We did a whole Q&A recently on the Holy Ghost. We did one in systematic theology about how the Spirit indwells us at salvation. Then we did one about the Holy Ghost baptism, which is different than the indwelling of the Spirit at salvation. And then we've done a Q&A on the Holy Ghost. And now I think I have enough to do another Q&A. Matter of fact, I'm leaning towards maybe next month's Q&A doing another one on just simply the Holy Ghost part two, because so many people have so many questions about the Holy Ghost that they have wondered about, and there's so much scripture about the Spirit. There's so much being promoted about the Spirit, and it causes people to have questions. And so I'm excited about answering those. That's where people's living at. That's where people's minds are. They're wanting to know, is this right? Is this wrong? Should we go with this? Should we go with that? And so I really love it when they send me those kind of questions. And I like detailed questions even. It shows me where the people's minds are. They'll say, you know, I've heard this, but the Bible says this. That lets me know they're not just thinking about it. They're seeking out an answer. And now they're asking somebody else, hey, could you help me figure this out? That's what we like doing. Folks, that's why he is saying we want your participation. If you have an episode you'd like to hear, drop us an email. If you've got a question that you can't figure out, ask us. We'll try our best to give you a biblical answer and scriptures to back up what we're saying. But we do want your participation. One thing that I have wondered about before is the length of the episodes. Is that hitting right where people want it? Is it striking anybody's fancy, keeping it 30 to 38 minutes? I try to shoot for 35. Sometimes we're down at 32. Sometimes we'll hit 38. Sometimes we go over, but I don't want it to be so long. People look and say, oh, wow, I ain't listening to no 45-minute study. I would like for the people in the audience to let us know, what do you think about the time frame in the episodes? What do you feel, Shana? Are the episodes about the right length, or would you like them shorter or longer? I think they're about the right length because, you know, there's not like a lot of wasted space in them. You're steadily giving scriptures. I think they're about the right length. I think that some topics you're teaching on probably requires a little more extra time where you couldn't shorten it. Probably each episode really depends on what you're teaching and how much you have to tell. So I think it'd be hard to set an actual exact minute of time of what each one of them is going to end at because there's so much in some subjects that you have to bring out to fully get a point across. It really just depends on your topics of how long it goes. That's true. How about you? Well, I like the length of our episodes. I think that a lot of times we do have subjects that takes a little more explaining. And then there's some that you can explain and do it pretty quickly. But I think it's not every episode that we go long. The ones that we do, I think it's a necessity that we explain what the people need to hear from the Word of God and explain it fully. I've had some people tell me that we need to lighten up and have more back and forth or more joking between us here. We do a little here or there, mainly at the beginning. Sometimes in between, we'll we'll say something once or twice throughout a 30, 35-minute study. But in all reality, our purpose is not to have a variety show. It's to have a Bible study. And that's the whole thing. I don't want to be light about the Bible. I don't want to take it lightly. I don't want to lightly esteem it. And so we're dealing with a lot of serious topics. And I understand that there's an appeal for people to joke around and laugh and, and make everything feel more comfortable and everybody more relaxed. But yet we're dealing with subjects that it's going to be heaven or hell, really. When you get down to the fine lines of it, I don't want somebody walking away thinking, wow, that's just a big joke to them. I want the audience to realize this is serious. We take what we're doing serious. Yes, I understand it would probably be more enjoyable if there was a bunch of joking, laughing going on. But yet the thing of it is, at the end of the day, we want you to know more about the Bible than you knew when you started the episode. That's our goal. 
It isn't to make you laugh and feel good about yourself. It's not to make you like us or hate us. It's just to get you more of the Word of God and get you deeper into the Scriptures. Well, like you said before, this is a Bible study. We're not a comedy show. People that listen to us desire the Word of God, and that's what we try to give you is what the Bible says. This is a heaven or hell issue. It's not something that we can play with. And I think it would be a waste of time if we didn't teach the Word of God like it is, something that's going to help you when you stand in the judgment. Shana, what do you think? Should we do more current events? Do you think that appeals to people more? Like in recent times, Israel detonated all of those pagers and walkie-talkies over in Lebanon and stuff like that. Is that things that people want to hear out there and us try to connect biblical truths to that? Or just talk about the subject itself and and not so much bring in, oh, this fulfills so-and-so scripture. Because honestly, there's things that happen that are very significant, but I don't know that you could actually apply a Bible verse to that. How do you feel about that? I don't feel like the war that Israel's in is just coincidence. I feel like we are seeing things taking place that is leading through the last days. I really feel like we do need to be aware of what's going on. I think it would probably be a good thing at times to kind of give some coverage on that. And if you can tie it with some scripture, then that's great too. I agree. I feel fully that people hear these things and they would like to know what the Bible says about it. And if there is biblical stuff about it, we would definitely want to give it to them. When you see Israel compassed about by so many armies. You know that it's now even at the door. That's my thinking as well. I guess where I'm at is I'm trying to strike the balance between two things. One, it intrigues me, but will it intrigue the audience? Secondly, I've had a lot of people tell me through the years that when a preacher gets up to preach, they don't want to hear current events. They want to hear the Bible. And so I've got that in the back of my mind. We're teaching the Bible. And so as people who are listening in, are they wanting to hear the Bible or they want some current events mixed in with it? We've got a lot of good response on our current event episodes and some of the things that are not just literally straight from the Bible, like our modern day bell worship episodes and stuff like that. Because I like asking an outside source. Well, I think that's where what we was talking about, the titles earlier would come in, because if someone's looking for something specific about the Bible, they see it there in the title. If they don't want to hear about a current event, if it's kind of in the title, they know not to listen to that. I think, too, that people like a mix of things. If you can take something that's happened and tie it to the Bible, I think people like that. I agree with that. I don't want any of our titles to appear to be clickbait. You know what they talk about when you're scrolling something online or you're flipping through everything on YouTube and there's this catchy topic and it sounds like spectacular news about President Trump. And then you open it up and he's doing a rally in Milwaukee. Honestly, they drew you in. And next thing you know, you're watching four minutes of something that has absolutely nothing to do with the picture. It's just clickbait. I don't want people to be coming to the title and think, wow. This is exactly what I've been looking for. And all of a sudden they're like, "Um, that ain't got nothing to do with what the title was. I want it to be true to life. I agree. Do you have any advice for people thinking about starting up a podcast of their own? Well, the first thing I would say is know your burden and stick with it. If you feel called to do a Bible study, do a Bible study, but do what you do with excellence. Take the time to do it right. If you're going to do one that involves a certain topic or a certain genre, do the best at what you're doing. And please, this is one of my things that I stress to everybody. I've talked to several people who have started podcasts and they've asked my advice before. And I always stress this, take the time to edit. Little things like that causes me not to go back and listen again. That's my preference. Okay. You may not prefer that. So first off, Know your burden, stay with it, do what you do and do the best that you can at it. And then take the time and edit it out and make it sound as good as you can. All right, friends. Remember, if you have a Bible question or a question regarding how news and current events or things going on within our culture are connected to scripture, drop us an email at DK Ministries 1977 at yahoo.com. That is DK Ministries 1977 at yahoo.com. We want to thank Shana Wilson for being with us today. It's always a pleasure for her to be on with us. Amen. Well, thank you. I was glad to get to be back again. Well, we certainly hope you enjoy this episode today, sharing God's Word. But until next time, may God bless you all. Be sure and come back Monday, October the 7th, for episode number 329, The Firstborn Created It.
done so much for me, this I know. Will it change my heart all around? Put my feet back on the ground, got along. Now for heaven, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. To that land where the milk and honey flow. Oh, I've heard of such a place. I can't go there by God's grace. Never seen it, but I know I want to go.